come up at this point because we're almost there. So, so earlier today, we presented you with a painting, an original canvas, a work of art by local artist Germs. And uh, it's going to be housed in our Fullerton Museum Center until you're ready for us to ship it to you. And, uh, you know, we're going to be honoring your legacy again, along with others from, from, you know, Fullerton punk rock history in April of 2025. But uh, I, I would like to point out that the, the piece of art that's, that's up in the gallery, you know, it showcases the, the roots of punk rock with some of the old school that actually I, I just learned Mike used to design their old school flyers. So he was, he was quite proud of that. And that was before, that's before Photoshop and clip art too. So those are, those are, those were some skills. Um, you probably had to use a Xerox, right? I mean, cut and paste. <laughs> yeah, you go to, you go to, that's old school cut and paste. The Kinkos. That's, yeah. You go to the Kinkos. And... <laughs> so, uh, but you could see that painting inside the gallery. But as we're here today, there's one thing I can hear in my mind, and that's life goes by so fast. You only want to do what you think is right. Close your eyes and it's past the story of my life. No, no truer words. No truer words have ever been written. So with that, it's my honor and privilege on behalf of the city of Fullerton and all of its residents to present you with the key to the city. Thank you, Mayor Dunlap, Miguel, thank you so much. Janet, thank you. How's everybody doing? We love you, Mike. I love you more. Let us not ask what the city can do for us, but what we can do for the city. That was not my mentality back then, but unintentionally, uh, unintentionally, things happen, and uh, well, I survived a lot of a lot of things, a lot of things, and. Uh, Forty years ago, they might have wanted to lock me up and throw away the key. <laughs> but things change. Things change. And uh, now I got a key. <laughs> what exactly does this... Uh, are we, I mean, I'm, I'm in. I'm in, yeah? I'm in inner sanctum. Yeah, okay. All right. After hours, like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> City vault. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hope you count the money. Yeah. Man, it's a little overwhelming. Yeah, this is a little emotional. Uh, I have nothing but fond memories of growing up in this town. Uh, I grew up on the east side, but I spent a lot of time. Our first house, when my parents moved here, us here, was uh, 1963 or something, uh, a little house on Malvern. We rented the back house from an older woman who was our babysitter. And uh, by then I was five years old and spent a lot of time alone at the babysitter's house and, and she had this bedroom with a radio and all this like religious art on the wall and I mean I, I guess it was like nudity you know like the angels are naked or I don't know so it's like you know it was like eroticism and rock and roll and I was five years old and this is what I want to do this is this is 
music did something for me. Um, my home life was not that good. And uh, music provided me something uh, to keep my mind focused and, and uh, pursue a dream. And Fullerton enabled that, you know. A lot of that was growing up in, that, in the 70s. You know, it was a lot more of a live and let live. That's what I remember. And that's what I miss now. Live and let live. We all got different views, political views, whatever. Different cultures, different backgrounds. But I remember that. Live and let live. And uh, Fullerton enabled that, at least until I became a punk rocker. <laughs> and then, then it got a little dangerous. It was dangerous being in Orange County and uh, roaming the streets looking the way we did. But uh, fortunately, I have the personality type that if you tell me, no, you can't do something, not only am I going to do it, I'm going to succeed at it. And, uh, and then I'm going to say, how you like me now? Yeah. I had a railroad tracks behind my house we spent a lot of time on, playing on the railroad tracks, the orange groves. Later on as a teenager, a lot of what happened in the music scene was just about a square mile of where we are right now. Um, <clears throat> Dennis and I would, here's a little tip, I'm not suggesting this to any youngsters, but you know a black leather motorcycle jacket, when it zipped up, you got three pockets. They all hold a 12-ounce Budweiser can. <laughs> so you're loaded at all times with that. But Dennis and I would walk down the railroad tracks from his house to Fullerton, uh, to Harbor Boulevard in Commonwealth, behind Brown's, Brown's Pawn Shop. It was a little studio where a band called The Mechanics used to practice every night. And that was like a hub of this early punk scene. They were the older guys, and we looked up to them. And they were cool, and they drove V-dub buses, and they were just the cool guys. And we wanted to be like them. And uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. Always trying. Um, but that band shaped me just as much as the Rolling Stones or the Ramones. You know, the guitar tones, the, uh, the rhythms, the, uh, well, they would come out at a Yorba Linda Kager party, high school party. There's only like eight punk rockers at the whole thing. But they would come out and say, we're the mechanics and we don't play no fucking slow songs. Never forget that. Um, anyways, nothing but fond memories of growing up here, whether I was in East Fullerton or downtown or, you know, I remember riding a big wheel down Hillcrest Park. Yeah. Get some speed in that bitch. Uh, lastly, I just can't express uh, my gratitude to everyone who showed up and the city for recognizing Dennis Danell's social distortion. Dennis was my partner in crime, man, back in the day. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't doing the crimes with me, but he was figuratively my partner in crime. We were we would drive to Hollywood on a Tuesday night, see some bands play, and come back to school the next day and tell everyone about it. And uh, I'm sure he's getting a, a, a tickle out of this for sure. 
Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank my wife, who... Yeah. Well... Behind every great man is a better woman. Yeah. In front of... Say a few words. I usually all have uh, at least a few words to say. Um, just want to thank. Um, My family, um, Michael, um, all of you guys. I grew up as a punk rocker as well, and um, it's a special community, and I just know how much fans mean to Mike, and just thank you for the years and decades of support so much. I think that's about it. I mean, once again, I just want to thank you guys so much. Yeah. This stuff doesn't happen. It's not supposed to happen. But like I said, things change. And uh, man, what a ride it's been. And yeah, I mean, I'm 62 today, but I'm living to 102. So we got 40 more years of Social D. Thank you, guys.